Salvete omnes. Today, Odd and I are going to help you learn the third declension. So the third declension, remember, is a new declension. So we know first declension and second declension, and now we're going to learn third declension, because you know we're so clever with names in Latin. So third declension, however, is kind of a pain because it's really irregular. So let's take a look and see how irregular it can be. So first, remember, guys, with declensions, all nouns have a declension. They don't change this declension, so doesn't matter what declension it's, di it's in, it stays that way. So Agricola stays Agricola, Nauta stays Nauta, Puer stays Puer, and so on and so forth. All of them stay in the declension that they're in. They're very distracting. They do not change declensions. The first declension is the A pattern, usually feminine words. Second declension is the O, E, and U pattern, usually masculine and neuter words. Third declension follows an I and E pattern, which includes all genders fairly evenly. There is no set nominative ending for third declension. You use the genitive always to find the stem, and there is no simple way to tell the difference between genders. It's going to be a little bit more of an onus on you guys to remember that, So, which is why we have been making you remember these forms from the get-go. So let's take a look at what the generic endings are. These are essentially the endings you can memorize if you wanted to memorize a set of endings or when we ask on tests for you to fill in an endings, uh, this is what we're looking at. So nominative is blank, genitive is is, dative is I, accusative is em, ablative is e, and vocative is blank again. Because remember, nominative and vocative like to repeat one another, except for in second declension, ius becomes i and us becomes e. In the plural, we have s, um, ibus, s, ibus, and s again. So notice, again, just like first declension, is, is, ibus is going to repeat in the date of an apple to plural. And then, however, with second declension, if you remember the neuter endings, a, 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 s is the same way with third declension. So s, s, s in nominative, accusative, and vocative plural. There are still some familiar things, too. You can see that Accusative ends in M still. The ablative is still a vowel by its lonesome. And if you take a look at the plural, there's still a UM ending, although we're missing the rum on this one. When you look at the neuter, this time the blank takes over the accusative slot instead of EM. So it becomes blank, IS, I, blank, E, blank. And then in the plural, just like in second declension, the ending is A. So A, um, IBUS, A, IBUS, A. You can remember this by blanka blanka, or so remember uma uma for second and blanka blanka for third. There are a few patterns that you can uh, rely on a little bit. So in masculine, you have the or oris pattern, such as amor amores. In feminine, we have the tas tatis pattern, kiwi tas kiwi tatis. Where and then you have the tus tutis, where tus where tutis. The tudo tudinus, multitudo multitudinous, and the tio tionis, not tio, not tionis. And these are essentially when you see something that ends in the nominative like this, you can assume that the genitive is going to look that way. In neuter, you have the same kind of idea, the us oris, corpus corporis. This is going to be a tricky one for you guys. You're going to have to really remember the differences with these words because they're going to look like second declension just by the nominative alone. The e is pattern, such as mare maris, the al alis, animal animalis, and the ar aris, exemplar exemplaris, and lastly the men menis pattern, nomen nominis. So now let's try some practice. I'd like you to try to decline the word mos moris, which is masculine, and from your vocabulary, it means custom, habit, and manner. In the plural, it's going to be mean habits, morals, and character. So like animus, animi had two separate definitions, one in the singular and one in the plural. Most moris has the same thing. So go on and pause the video right now and decline most moris in your notes. Resume when you are ready. So here's what most moris looks like when you have it fully declined. Mos, moris, mori, morem, more, mos, mores, morum, moribus, mores, moribus, mores. Again, remember we have to use the genitive to find the stem always with third declension because that nominative form is irregular. So once we look at the genitive ending, moris, take off the is and you're left with mor, and that becomes what I repeat for all the other cases except for vocative, 
which just repeats the nominative. So now let's try another one. Let's try corpus corporis, which is neuter and means body. So remember it's neuter, so it's going to follow the neuter ending, so keep that in mind as you decline this. Pause the video and resume when you are ready. Okay, now let's take a look at corpus corporis. How does it look when it's declined? You have corpus, corporis, and again, remember, we have to look at corporis to find our stem for all of the other endings, with the exception of the nominative, accusative, and vocative singular, because they are all the same as the nominative, because this is neuter. So it should be corpus, corporis, corpori, corpus, corpore, corpus, corpora, corporum, corporibus, corpora, corporibus, compora. This concludes our presentation. I hope you guys found it enlightening. We'll be going over it, of course, lots in class, so don't worry if you are a little confused still. Make sure you fill out your Google form with any questions as well, and we will see you tomorrow in class. Wallet Tayomnes.